right, guys, it's time for our financial checkup. And news that we just got today, which is nothing short of scandalous. Turns out that John Corzine gave direct instructions to transfer hundreds of millions of dollars from a customer account. So let's break that all down. Joining me to discuss is Lauren Lister, host of the Capital Account here on RT. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's get into this entire MF Global scandal that we've been seeing. I mean, John Corzine was on Capitol Hill. He was testifying before Congress. You do that after you swear an oath. And uh, we have a little, a little tidbit of what he said when he was there. Let's take a listen. I simply do not know where the money is or why the accounts have not been reconciled to date. So the what do we know now? Okay, yeah. so the takeaway from that is him saying, I don't know where the money is, which is what we've seen with this. Okay, everybody that I've spoken to, because obviously for viewers that are new to this story, the issue here is MF Global went bankrupt and $1.6 billion in customer money is missing. Okay, customer money from segregated accounts, it's like a bank account, Alona. It's not supposed to be taken and used by a brokerage firm. That is sacrosanct. That is against the regulations. I mean, this is caused, uh, I mean, a massive amount of, um, it's just royal U.S. markets and faith in U.S. markets from all over the world. So this is, it has a really large implications. It's a really big deal. There you have Corzine saying, I don't know where the money is. Everybody goes, come on, this is criminal. This is fraud. Why isn't the CEO being held responsible? And when I say people say this is criminal, these are former regulators. These are people whose money has been stolen that are hedge fund managers, lawyers, pro bono attorneys that are representing customers. I mean, a wide swath of people, Alona, that we've talked to because we've been following this story from the beginning. So yeah, what we have... have been, uh, you know, on top of it every yeah. step of the way, but it's not only that... The CEO hasn't resigned yet. I mean, these guys were getting bonuses just the other week, too. Well, we found out they about may, the they may. The trustee wants to, them, yeah. exactly, the trustee may give them bonuses. The trustee is a whole other sketchy issue. But what has come out, Bloomberg has obtained a memo from the treasury of, uh, the treasurer of MF Global at the time, from October 28th, just days before they get, went bankrupt, saying that John Corazine ordered the transfer of customer funds from a customer fund account, $200 million, to JP Morgan to make up for a shortfall. So there is an email, allegedly, saying that John Corzine knew about this transfer. So that's the first big, huge issue. Uh, and the second is that JP Morgan, which is a huge through line in this story, Alona, this is the, really a too big to fail angle where JP Morgan seems to be pulling a lot of the strings here. They knew that these were customer funds. They the did thing it anyway. is, well, yeah, they asked for a letter saying that these, because there can sometimes be MF Global money in with customer fund accounts. They asked for a letter making sure that these weren't customer funds. They never got the letter. They kept the money anyway. So there's all sorts of big issues that this brings up. It'll be really interesting to see what happens on a hearing Wednesday. But the bigger picture is if somebody doesn't pay for this, how are people going to have faith that well, their money is safe? I'm wondering safe? about that. You know, are you going to have any faith? But, but haven't we already gotten used to this, unfortunately, in a certain respect? No, um, I don't think we have, Alona, because although but nobody's we've seen paid too big to fail. Forget about MF Global. What happened before MF Global, right? Yeah. The entire financial collapse, and still nobody's paid for that. Yes, you're absolutely right about that. I think what's different about this is you have all of these maybe allegations of fraud and settlements that have come from the financial crisis and, and things that are definitely could be perceived as criminal and, and there should have probably been much more investigated and probably prosecutions. I think this is taking it one step further because this is going to be people getting away with actually reaching into your account and stealing your money from a segregated account. This is like if you wake up one morning and you are a, have a bank account at J.P. Morgan Chase at Chase Bank, and J.P. Morgan has taken that money to uh, make good on a trade because of a margin call. I mean, it's theft. Uh, Jim Rogers, investor and author of A Bull in China, investing profitably in the world's greatest market. Take a listen to this. Thank you. I want to talk about MF Global. Because, Mr. Rogers, you said very early on that MF Global broke the sacrosanct rules in the commodities market, taking money out of segregated accounts. Mr. Rogers, it has been five months since MF Global declared bankruptcy. Customers are still missing their money. John Corzine is still walking free. There have not been a lot of consequences. I'm curious. Where is this leading? Are we going to see next that, you know, Chase customers wake up one morning and see that there's money taken from their accounts from J.P. Morgan? Is that the message this is sending? Well, it, it might very well happen that way, but this is certainly sending a, a terrible message to the world. You're never supposed to touch uh, segregated accounts. That's the first rule one learns 
in the commodities business and somebody touched the money. Mm -hmm. Now that's, it's that simple. But Lauren, this is a bigger issue. You know, nobody's gone to jail here in the past few years. In the 30s, a lot of people went to jail. The president of the New York Stock Exchange went to jail. In the 90s, when we had the, the what were they called, the, the bad the SNL problems, yeah. hundreds of people went to jail. Nobody has gone to jail here. This is just staggering. And the problems and the, the misallocations, if you want to be nice about it, have been worse than ever. And yet nobody has suffered. And Mr. Rogers, I think... Except the poor victims. Except the poor victims. I think it's interesting you said the message it sends to the world sitting there in Singapore. You can attest to the fact that this is not just the U.S. that is getting this message. The world is getting this message. But on the point that, that you made about how people have not been prosecuted, people have not been put in prison, Mr. Rogers, we have talked to a regulator during the SNL crisis who was the director of litigation who saw that bankers that had committed corruption were prosecuted for that. We've spoken to pro bono attorneys that are working on behalf of customers in this case. We've spoken to futures uh, industry veterans who are just so shocked that this has happened and are investigating what is going on. And yet they're all saying this is fraud, this is criminal, and nothing is happening. Do you think there's something bigger going on here? And if so, what is it? Well, there's obviously something bigger. I'm not sure what it is. It just may be more incompetence in Washington or more covering our behinds in Washington. You know, Mr. Corzine was a big contributor to the Democratic Party, was a major player in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on. I do know that sitting back here and the rest of us, especially the people who suffered, know that there's something badly wrong. And by the way, Lauren, I think that the people who suffered in all of this had rather have their money back than see people in jail if they had a choice. What they'd really like is their money back and to see people in jail. But this is this is not good for anybody. Yeah, you may be right. And we'll have